Hi students, welcome back. First and foremost, I wanna say congratulations. At this point in our narrative writing unit, you should have a full draft ready for the revision stage of the writing process. Today, we're going to focus on how we can show a story instead of telling a story. Details truly matter. Today, we're gonna to talk about how you're going to take your story from what is called a two-dimensional surface level story to a multi-dimensional 3D story that has tons of details that are really going to bring your story to life. A few of the ways that we're going to do this are through things such as showing details versus telling details. We're gonna talk about how you can leave evidence like a criminal might so that our readers can find these little clues, these little details, these little pieces of evidence and put them together so that they can see your story in a 3D perspective versus 2D. We're also going to share our one sentence summaries about our plot and we're gonna post our one sentence summaries so that our writing group partners can help give us ideas about how we might be able to revise our stories and make them more 3D. Now writers, at this point in your academic career, you know the difference between summarizing and storytelling. When we summarize something, we're condensing it down to just the basic necessary information in order to understand something. But when we're storytelling, we want to grasp on and take hold of every small detail that's going to help bring our story to life. Let's take a look at this example. Which version do you think is better? In my paper, I could write this. On Friday afternoon, Mrs. Kim's snake escaped from the tank in the science lab. Does that give me the general idea of what happened? Sure, but really, that's just a summary. We're telling stories, which means we want to add detail to make our, in, make our reader interested in what we're saying. We could say something such as, The breeze rattled the shades as it blew into our classroom windows. There was soft music playing in the background. The classroom was still except for the turning of a page. Everyone was engrossed in their writing. Suddenly, the door to the classroom swung open with a slam. Miss Kim stood in the doorway, her lab coat slightly crooked, her forehead beaded with sweat. The snake escaped. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that I would want to read this part of the story over this one. Like I said, when we're summarizing, we're doing a 2D version. We're not really giving a lot of details. And now what we try to do is we're trying to make our stories 3D. By doing that, we need to leave evidence everywhere in the story that we're writing. We're trying to be like a criminal who wants to get caught, one who leaves evidence everywhere. Here are some examples, how we can show the evidence. How do you show someone is nervous? We might say they were, their eyes were, peeking around the classroom and they were looking around suspiciously, playing with their hands, toying with their pencil. How do you show someone is mad? Maybe they slammed their computer down onto the desk and screamed at the person sitting next to them. How do you show someone is embarrassed? Maybe their cheeks flushed red and they lowered their head and peeked up at the rest of the class through their eyelashes. These are ways of showing and not telling. Thinking back to our mentor text about Rachel and Ashley and their awkward play date. Let's try this with Rachel. Rachel could have said, I followed her in. I think her house might actually be a mansion. Now she did say this and we see Rachel's thoughts, but where's the evidence? How do we show that Ashley's house is actually a mansion? I want you to think about a mansion. What it looks like in your head. Use your senses. What does a mansion look like? What does it sound like? Let's take a look and let's see what Rachel does in order to show that Ashley's house is a mansion instead of just telling us. Instead of saying Ashley's house is a mansion, she says, the ceiling is very, very far from the floor in the room where you walk in. In my house, we have a front hall. Ashley's, you'd have to call a lobby. On the left, there was a huge room that I think was a library anywhere. There were a ton of books in there on dark shelves all the way up to the ceiling. At the far end of the library, two huge doors opened into some other room. I don't know what room it was or if that one would open into another huge room. 
I decided to stay close to Ashley to avoid getting lost. Continuing on with Rachel's description of Ashley's house as a mansion, instead of saying she doesn't know where to go, she says, Ashley unzipped her jacket and dropped it on the floor with her backpack still hooked through the sleeves. I took off my jacket and backpack too, put them next to Ashley's, then followed Ashley past a dining room that had paintings of annoyed looking people hanging on the greenish walls down a long hallway into the kitchen. Now, Rachel simply could have said, I don't really know where to go, so I just followed Ashley. But instead of telling us what she did, she showed us what she did by providing details that would have happened in that scene. Let's do some practice. In preparation for the practice on the next slide, I want you to go ahead and write this down into the next blank page in your notebook. This will prepare you for the practice that we're about to do in just a moment. I'm going to give you an original sentence. Dinner was on the table and the guests arrived. I want you to revise this sentence here using your five senses, your who, what, where, when, why, and how, and also your senses, your smell, your taste, your touch, your sight, your sound. I also want you to try adding transitional phrases. Go ahead and jot this down into your notebook and pause the video here. All right, so now that you've got that written down, here are some things that I want you to consider, okay? Transform this sentence from telling to showing. Dinner was on the table and the guests arrived. Do we have the basic idea and we understand what's going on? Sure, but this is a summary. Remember, we're trying to tell a story. I want you to use your sensory images, your smell, taste, touch, sound, sight, to show what would happen. I also want you to think about who, what, where, when, why, and how. Go ahead and pause this video and revise those sentences now to show that dinner was on the table and the guests arrived versus just telling me. When you're done, come back to this video and let's take a look at some things that you could have done. Welcome back. Hopefully, you were able to use those sensory images and those questions such as who, what, where, when, why, and how in order to transform that sentence into a showing sentence versus a telling sentence. Here's an example that one student wrote. As I sat in the living room, I could hear the tinkering of silverware being gathered from the drawers. The scent of roasted turkey and steamy chocolate chip cookies gathered in the air. Charlie, help me with the salad plates and napkins, my mom hollered from the dining room. I walked in just as my dad poured a large glass of cider into each cup on the table. Ring! All of a sudden, the doorbell screamed to life and in charge the stampede of my cousins, followed by my aunt and uncle. Time to eat, my mom announced. Mm, I can't wait. By adding in information about where the story was taking place, the smell of the dinner, what the character heard with the doorbell, and the tinkering of the silverware, the stampede of cousins running in, and their inner thinking, we were able to see what the character saw versus just being told that dinner was on the table and the guests arrived. Now that we've looked at some examples of show, don't tell writing, let's go ahead and open up to our anchor chart titled, How to Write Compelling Fiction, and let's add these notes into our anchor chart. Session five, how can we show a story instead of tell a story? Well, we can use evidence and details, such as a character's actions, inner thinking, and feelings. We can also use dialogue to show interactions with others. We also know that we can use sensory, sensory details, such as sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. And we can also use our five W's and our H, our who, what, when, where, why, and how, in order to add more details into our writing. Go ahead and pause the video here to add these notes into your chart. I want you to go back into a moment from your story. And I want you to summarize a particular moment and I want you to share that with your partner. If you were to not give your partner any details and you were just to give them a summary, discuss how you could turn that summary into a 3D story by discussing with your partner that specific moment. Share some ideas with them and go back into your writing. 
And now we have some work time. I want you to think about your own story. How do you add evidence to your story? How can you revise your 3D story? Storytelling bit by bit, including evidence of your character's thoughts, their actions, their feelings, descriptions of the setting and the actions and what are going on using our sensory details and our imagery. How can we show our characters by putting them into action and going into detail about what that action is? If you're stuck, I want you to think about descriptions of the setting. Where did the story take place? How did it look? What did it look like? What about your character's personality? What about emotions to interactions with the other minor characters? How can you add inner thinking? Ask yourself those key questions, the who, what, where, when, why, and how of the scene. Now that you've worked on your draft, I want you to also go back in and start thinking about transitional phrases, a phrase that can take your action forward or backward in time. Sometimes these transitional phrases can be sentence starters, such as all of a sudden, and suddenly, afterward, meanwhile, that night, last year, earlier that day, after what seemed like forever, if only, and in the distance. Transitional phrases are a great way of putting your reader into the mindset of the character so that they can see exactly how the events of the story string together. In your work time today, I want you to focus on revising your story and storytelling bit by bit, including evidence of your character's thoughts, actions, and feelings. Show your characters by, by putting them into action. Happy writing, and as always, if you need any help, please see your teacher for assistance.